Hey guys, this is Dr. Duncan here with a review of some of the important concepts about the role of predation in ecosystems. In particular, we're going to take a look at predator-prey population cycles and also how predation impacts community structure. First, let's review how predation compares to other types of ecological relationships. In this chart, a plus sign indicates that the relationship is beneficial to a species, while a minus sign indicates that the relationship is bad for a species. Zeros indicate a neutral relationship. You should keep this chart handy throughout the course and our discussion of other relationships. We see in the chart that predation benefits one species, the predator, at the loss of another species, the prey. It's the same type of outcome we see for herbivory and parasitism. Predation can alter the size of prey populations and vice versa. In microcosm experiments with didinium and paramecium, the didinium ate paramecia until there were none left. Then the didinium died out because there was no more food. In nature, we don't usually see predator and prey populations go extinct. Instead, we expect to see this. This graph shows the idealized relationship between predator and prey populations. Notice first that the two populations cycle over time. Neither goes extinct. There are times when each population is high and times when each population is low. Finally, notice that prey populations peak and dip slightly before predator populations peak and dip. The peaks don't match because it takes time for predators to convert the energy they obtain from eating prey into new predators. The valleys don't match because when prey populations hit rock bottom, predators are still dying off from lack of food. Here's an example from the wild. This graph shows lynx and snowshoe hare populations based on fur trapping data. Because they are from the commercial fur trade, the data aren't perfect, but they nicely show what can be seen in wild populations. Notice that both species cycle in synchrony, but are slightly offset as predicted. Notice also that neither species goes extinct. The difference with the idealized cycle we saw before is that these populations show a lot more variability. This is likely because real populations are affected by many things, not just predators or prey. For example, in some years there may be a lot of hares born because there's a lot of food. So why don't predator and prey populations go extinct, as we saw in the microcosm experiment? There may be several reasons. An important one is known as prey switching. This is where predators have multiple species that they can eat, and when there are few of one prey species, they switch to another. Most predators have multiple prey species, and for that reason, we rarely see tight relationships between predator and prey populations as we saw with the lynx and the snowshoe hare. Another reason that populations don't go extinct is that predators may themselves be prey to another species, or their population can be affected by diseases. The intervention of other ecological relationships is why we rarely see tidy population pattern curves as I showed you with the idealized cycle. Biologists have done many experiments that have confirmed many of the expectations that we would have for predator-prey relationships. But experimentation has also led to the discovery of ecological relationships that would otherwise have remained hidden. For example, on the rocky shores of the Pacific coast, starfish eat barnacles and mussels. Barnacles and mussels compete for both food and space on the rocks. Because barnacles are more abundant, one might assume that although the two species live in coexistence, the mussels are the dominant competitor. One way of determining the impact of a predator is to remove that predator from the ecosystem to see what happens. Based on what I've told you so far, what do you think would happen if starfish were removed? Rewind if necessary to listen to the previous information, then pause the video and come up with a prediction before restarting the video. Okay, now that you're back, here's what happened. When starfish were removed, mussel populations grew quickly and barnacle populations declined and were pushed out of the ecosystem. Is this what you predicted? Probably not, since I told you that barnacles were more abundant than mussels. 
The experiment revealed that mussels are the dominant competitor, not barnacles. When starfish are present, starfish eat lots of mussels. It's their favorite food. However, when starfish are removed, mussel populations grow and push barnacles out of the ecosystem. The result is competitive exclusion. This illustrates what we've seen in many ecosystems around the world. Having healthy predator populations increases the diversity of species that can be sustained in an ecosystem. One way of thinking about this is that the predator keeps one species from hogging all the resources to themselves. In this example from the intertidal zone, the starfish serves as what's known as a keystone species. Keystone species are those that have a very big influence on an ecosystem one that is disproportionate to the overall population size of that species. In this instance, a few starfish are able to maintain a high diversity of other species in the ecosystem by preventing competitive exclusion. Another great example of a keystone predator comes from the west coast of, also comes from the west coast of the US. Kelp forests are underwater algae ecosystems. Kelp grow very tall and the habitat they provide is a nursery ground for many other species. Sea otters are apex predators that eat a lot of sea urchins. When sea otters were exterminated by fur trappers and by fishermen who thought that the otters ate fish, we saw the collapse of the kelp ecosystems all along the west coast. Here's what happened. When otters were exterminated, urchin populations grew quickly. As it turned out, Urchins loved to eat kelp. As urchin populations grew, kelp populations declined and the kelp forests disappeared. Without the kelp, fish species no longer had nursery habitats for their young and fish populations crashed. This caused the unemployment of many fishermen and people in businesses related to the fisheries. So, in this ecosystem, we see that the otter is a keystone species and without them, many other species disappear. This is illustrated in the food web diagram at the right. All the species in gray disappeared when the otters were gone. I'll end with a plug for species conservation. What the otter example shows us is that healthy, intact ecosystems provide more for us than ecosystems in which we've caused some species to disappear.